Welcome to the TMMI video presentation for iFix 5.8 installation. <clears throat> Our objectives will be to install iFix 5.8 as a SCADA node. We're going to install our iFix service packs and SIMs. We are assuming that a supported operating system and the latest Windows updates are installed. And if Microsoft Office is being used, it is installed before iFix is installed. I do have the needed components uh, saved on a jump drive. You could use your DVD. Uh, I find it easier to use a jump drive to install the software. I also have the needed service packs. That I downloaded from GE's website uh, available to me. We'll show you that link here uh, after we run the install. So I'm just going to launch the install front end. I will install iFix 5.8. Yes, we want to proceed. After iFix installs some required components like C++, uh, you're at your iFix 5.8 install. We'll hit Next. We'll accept the license agreement. In general, we do a typical install. Uh, you could choose complete, custom, but we uh, will in general suggest a typical install. We also suggest installing iFix into the default uh, destination directory, which on a 64-bit machine is Program Files x86, Prophecy, and Prophecy iFix. You can always change the location of your picture files or database files later on, but uh, it is suggested that the default install is done to the uh, suggested directory. And we'll hit Install. As you'll notice, GE will install all the components that it needs to be any version of iFix, whether it's a SCADA node, a view node, a terminal server machine, etc. It does install all the software needed to be any of those components. It is controlled by what key is on the system and um, what options are set selected under the system configuration utility. But those changes can be made at any point in time. So a, a client machine could easily be turned into a SCADA node if need be, um, if the SCADA node dies or something like that. So it's good to know that, that all the components are installed um, to be either a view node, SCADA node, etc. And all you have to do is turn those components on <clears throat> or off. There is no reinstalling of the software needed. One other thing you'll notice is by installing off of a jump drive instead of a CD, your install will go much quicker um, than instead of a CD read and write. The next question we get asked is whether we're going to be a SCADA node or a view node, whether we're going to be networked or standalone. I'm going to choose a SCADA node. I'm going to choose standalone. Again, whatever selections you make here does not matter because all the components are installed for you to be a SCADA or a view or networked or standalone. You'll never have to reinstall this uh, to add additional software. So I'm going to choose my uh, node name as SCADA1, SCADA node, and we're going to be a standalone node for now. Yes, we would like to enable iFix to work through the Windows firewall that opens up the firewall port for iFix communications. Some other components get installed, like the OPC driver by default, Discover and AutoConfig, which is another video that we have available if you would like to automatically build iFix database tags based on your driver configurations. Next, we get asked if we want to install a Microsoft Visual Basic update. We'll say yes here. That is a security update by Microsoft. It takes only a second to install. And we're not going to look at the release notes. And I'm not going to restart my computer for now. All right. That takes me back to my jump drive. I'm going to install Service Pack 1. Again, a quick install when running it from the jump drives here. Say next. <clears throat> Accept the license agreement. And do you wish to update factory defaults? We're going to say yes. And finish. <clears throat> next, we'll install the workspace C++ 
sim. This is the latest workspace sim that's available right now. You always want to check the GE website and see what those sims are. Again, after I install these, I'll jump out to the, the GE website and show them. Update the factory default. We're going to say yes again. And last one, database manager. And that one's installed. So a quick look at the GE website uh, where we get these sims from. We'll go to support.ge-ip.com. Along the right-hand side, we'll see service packs and sims. I'm going to click on sims. And I'm going to choose my product family of industrial software. Product name is going to be HMI SCADA iFix. And we're going to choose version 5.8. <coughs> All right, so we see service pack 1 listed here, workspace 008, and database manager 002. Those are currently the, the latest sims for, uh, for this uh, version of iFix. All right, close that down. So we've installed iFix, we've installed our three sims, and I might go take a look at the system configuration utility really quick. Oops, try that one more time. Eh, not seeing it, so we'll just do it this way. Double click on our iFix 5H shortcut, and we'll launch the SCU from here. So here I am, set up a SCADA 1. I am a standalone node. I can quickly look at this and see that it's set for standalone. If I wanted to enable network support, I'd go to networking, enable network support, and now view nodes could connect to me. If I was a view node, or I wanted to be a view node and turn off the SCADA portion of this, I could click on the SCADA configuration right here and simply disable SCADA support. And that turns me into a view node. Notice the PLC disappears because I don't need drivers, and the database disappears from the list here. Of course, as a view node, I'd probably change my name to something like view1. Quick and simple change um, to make your system a SCADA node or a view node. Quick install. Again, if you installed it as a view node by accident, you can quickly come in here and double-click this, change it to the SCADA node name you want to use. Maybe you change this description up here to have your SCADA node name in there. Again, this is just a title at the top here. It doesn't really matter what it says. Most importantly, this option here, enabling SCADA support, choosing your database, and choosing your drivers. My driver list looks pretty thin because I haven't installed any additional drivers. You'll probably run the IGS driver install, which we have a video of that um, to help you install the driver. So here's our SCADA configuration. One last thing, this was a blank system without any iFix installed on it. We'll go ahead and start up iFix in demo mode and um, let you see this run really quickly here. And here's my iFix workspace, started up, ready to go. Uh, your key takeaways with this is iFix installs all needed components during the install for either an HMI configuration or a SCADA configuration. Um, very easy to configure, very quick to install. Thank you for watching. Uh, for more information, contact tmmi.com.